join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. Thank you for tuning in. This is Gloria Lee, the moderator for the show Women of Courage. Wherever you are in the world, I need you to know one thing right now. You are amazing. I know you might be upset. I know you might be hurting. And I know you might be frustrated. I know because all of these things happened to me. I was homeless for two years and all I had was a computer, my son, and a car. I want you to know you still have a purpose in life, and it is my job to help you believe that again. Do you want to believe? Can you see that the divorce was not meant to take you out? Can you believe that the lost house and the lost job is a setup for something greater? By the end of this broadcast, You'll be injected with so much that you cannot help but believe again. And I am going to help you do just that. Are you ready? I got some things I want to share with you. And I will even make suggestions on books and activities that you can implement, which will ultimately bring healing and wholeness to you. If you are ready to be healed, if you're ready to be whole, just dot down the pointers I give and watch your life transform. No matter what happened, no matter whose fault it was, today is a new day, and your time to live and be free is now. Join me in this journey to wholeness. Your time for total healing is now. Today you shall recover. Wholeness, healness, and peacefulness is in the mind. That is where all battles for life end and begin. Today's discussion will center around the word self-esteem and reading. Reading will lead you to knowledge of yourself and others. The word self-esteem is a noun and it is defined as a confidence and satisfaction in oneself, self-respect, self-conceit. So everything is fine as long as a person has a good self-image of self. They are happy with their accomplishments. They are happy with the way they think people see them. They are happy with their marriage. They're happy with their bank account, their house, car, as compared to others. Wholesome self-esteem is the conviction that one is as worthwhile as anyone else, but not more so. But when one's self-esteem is low, all sorts of disasters happen. Signs of low self-esteem. A person always says, I'm sorry, for no reason. They are afraid to make a mistake. They expect rebuke or ridicule. They have a sinking mold. Research has shown that signs of low self-esteem are sensitivity to criticism, social withdrawal, hostility, excessive preoccupation with personal problems, physical symptoms such as fatigue, insomnia, and headache. Sometimes people put on a false front to impress others, like not paying one's house note or car note to buy a $200 purse to impress others, spending hours in a nail salon purchasing false nails for hundreds of dollars. People with low self-esteem struggle with self-critical negative thoughts. They are constantly criticizing themselves. Their thoughts often criticize and hold them back from going after what they really want in life. When a person feels worthless, they can start to show poor performance or stop trying to achieve in areas in which they feel defeated, academically, professionally, or personally. Failure can be especially tough on people with low self-esteem. They experience more shame than others. Low self-esteem is learned. 
learned and accurate information that you in some way are not enough, that you don't matter, that your feelings are wrong, or that they, you don't deserve respect. Keep in mind that learned behavior can be unlearned. Some people have grown up with false beliefs. Often these beliefs get handed down from generation to generation. A person may not have been told these things directly, but they have been inferred from behavior and attitude of family, friends, and events. You may not be conscious of these beliefs about yourself. This is especially true of women. Women should speak softly as not to be seen as confrontational, making them less desirable as a wife. Women do not want to appear boastful of their accomplishments because this will make them unsuitable as a wife. Consequently, your true goal is to be a wife. Women should not wear pants because they should not appear manly. This makes them undesirable to men. A woman's main objective is to appear desirable. Book learning is not important. No man wants a woman smarter than he is. The list goes on and on for undesirable behaviors for women, holding them back from living the life they desire. Millions and millions and millions of women have gone to their grave because they did not live the eventful life and fulfilling life that they wanted all because they were told what they should and should not do. People have many fears and anxieties based on false ideas about themselves and others. For example, many think that making a mistake is unacceptable and shameful. They become anxious about taking risks, trying something new, or expressing their appear opinion because they're afraid of failure or looking foolish. Pay attention to what I just said. People have many fears and anxieties based upon false ideas about themselves and others. For example, many think making a mistake is unacceptable and shameful. They become anxious about taking risks, trying something new, or expressing their opinion because they are afraid of failure or to look foolish. Is that a description of you? Most people do not realize that they unconsciously believe that they are unlovable, unlikable, flawed, or somehow inadequate. Even if they are aware of these false beliefs, they convince themselves that this is the truth. As a result, they're anxious about revealing who they are and please control or impress others so they'll be loved and not rejected. Other people withdraw rather than risk abandonment. People judge themselves based upon their erroneous beliefs and imagine others are judging them the same. Sometimes I witness one spouse claim that the other is criticizing him or her when that isn't the truth. The false belief about unworthiness undermines self-esteem and security and has serious consequences to your life. Your lack of confidence and self-trust Live in doubt and continuously self-guess yourself. Many people do not feel worthy of being in the position of authority or having success or even happiness. Most people who are convinced that they are bad can end up in relationships with people who are emotionally or physically abusive, which reinforces and worsens their low self-esteem. Listen to this sentence again. Those who are convinced that they're bad can end up in relationships with people who are emotionally or physically abusive, which reinforces and worsens their low self-esteem. At a conscious level, they may be indignant and think that they deserve better, but still they stay and try to get the abuser to approve them. Some stay because they believe the abuser loves them which helps them overcome their belief that they're unlovable and that no one else will ever love them. When you grow up with the message that you shouldn't feel a certain way or that it is unsafe to express certain feelings, you start to believe it. An example includes being told not to get excited, being punished for anger, or having your distress or sadness ignored. Some shaming parents will tell their children not to cry 
or I'll give you something to cry for. As an adult, you judge and dishonor your feelings. You hide them, sometimes even from yourself. If you don't believe that that's all right to be angry, you might behave passive aggressively or become depressed or have physical symptoms unaware of how angry you are. This behavior is destructive to relationships. Some people withhold sex or have affairs because they're angry instead of talking about their relationship problems. Keep in mind, I said earlier that if a behavior is learned, it can be unlearned. Changing behavior starts with awareness. You can become aware of your beliefs by paying attention to the way you talk to yourself. We all conduct an internal dialogue with ourselves each and every day, each and every hour of the day. Pay attention to what you're saying to yourself. Write down all the negative things you say to yourself. Become aware of your inner voice. This is your critic. This critic affects your mood and well-being. You must bring this critic under control. This is why it is extremely important that you write down all negative thoughts that you have during the day that bring you to a low ebb. Note the gaps between your intentions and actions. Journal about this discrepancy and your interactions with others. Analyze the beliefs motivating your behavior. Ask yourself where did these beliefs come from? Yes, this is going to be painful, but only temporary because you're seeking knowledge of yourself. So you have to undergo this pain in order to change your behavior so you can live a better life. The most important belief to have is the belief that you can change. You should seek professional help so that you can be taught techniques that will help you control for periods of dread and anxiousness. Your mind is a powerful creative gift. Learn to use your mind to work for yourself, not against you. Seeking professional help is not a sign of weakness. It is actually smart. Why not get help from a person professionally trained to lead people from despair to happiness? I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Are sex trafficking and literacy important to you? Would you like to help? Well, now you can. We meet twice a month on Saturday. I invite each and every one of you to join me at a local restaurant throughout the city to discuss the importance of sex trafficking and literacy in our community. We need your help now. If you would like a chance to give back to your community, I urge you to send an email to murderedvoices at gmail.com to get dates, times, and locations of each meeting. Again, email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Stand up and help us fight the good fight together. Attention women, have you ever asked yourself why society views you as a lesser being to a man? Or why most leadership positions are filled by a man? I urge you to visit touchedbythelight.us and get your copy of this amazing, inspiring new book called Women of Courage Part 1. It's carefully written with a passion for all women. It's the time for all mothers, sisters, and daughters to come together as one. Unite together and understand your life and make a change today. Visit Touched by the Light.us and order this new book, Women of Courage Part 1, and feel the love and dedication it has to offer. Get your copy today.
Attention women, have you ever asked yourself why society views you as a lesser being to a man? Or why most leadership positions are filled by a man? I urge you to visit touchedbythelight.us and get your copy of this amazing, inspiring new book called Women of Courage Part 1. It's carefully written with a passion for all women. It's the time for all mothers, sisters, and daughters to come together as one. Unite together and understand your life and make a change today. Visit Touched by the Light.us and order this new book, Women of Courage Part 1, and feel the love and dedication it has to offer. Get your copy today. Attention women, have you ever asked yourself why society views you as a lesser being to a man? Or why most leadership positions are filled by a man? I urge you to visit touchedbythelight.us and get your copy of this amazing, inspiring new book called Women of Courage Part 1. It's carefully written with a passion for all women. It's the time for all mothers, sisters, and daughters to come together as one. Unite together and understand your life and make a change today. Visit Touched by the Light.us and order this new book, Women of Courage Part 1, and feel the love and dedication it has to offer. Get your copy today. We live in a society that has created an impression that a woman is limited in what she can do. The society lets you see yourself as a weaker human who should not aspire to greater things. Most of us grew up with that mentality and thus turned out to be unambitious. Good news is, there are lots of women out there, just like you, who have turned their lives around dramatically. There's one underlying factor common to all these women. Courage! They were courageous in the face of societal intimidation. They were courageous enough to move against societal norms that were unacceptable to them. They were courageous when it mattered most, thus writing their names in the sands of time. Reading the series Women of Courage is a good place to learn about the significant role courage plays in achieving great things in life. This right here, this is the moment right before the day starts when you get to look in the mirror and tell yourself who you are. Now you've been through some dark days, I believe that. But all that pain and struggle, that made the person you're looking at now. So when you walk out of these doors today, I need you to believe in yourself. I need you to believe you are the strongest person walking this planet. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know the grind it took for you to be here. So when you leave here today, I need you to show them. Twice a month, on Saturday, I meet with my listeners for a discussion about issues affecting women. Join us. For dates, times, and directions, you can reach us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Stop thinking there's nothing you can do to change the world. Your life is important. For more information on our books or subjects discussed, email us at 
murderedvoices at gmail.com. Modern history is written on the back of women who chose not to conform. Our history books are littered with examples of powerful women like Rosa Parks, Malala Yousafzai, and the Triangle Shirtwaist factory workers. But for every tale of a woman's success and perseverance, there is a harrowing backstory of tribulation and strife. Things are better now, we say. It's not like it used to be. But turn on the news. Turn on the news in your own city. Turn on the international news. Women are suffering from the restrictive society in Saudi Arabia to your own neighborhood. It's better, but ask yourself, is it good enough? Women of Courage tells a tale of women from the harrowing story of early women to their victorious perseverance. It tells tales that have not been told enough, examples of how women have the strength to put their foot down and map their own future. Read their stories and become better equipped to write your own story by changing your behavior and becoming a woman of courage. We live in a society that has created an impression that a woman is limited in what she can do. The society lets you see yourself as a weaker human who should not aspire to greater things. Most of us grew up with that mentality and thus turned out to be unambitious. Good news is there are a lot of women out there just like you who have turned their lives around dramatically. Women like Mother Teresa, Lucy Burns, and Rosa Parks. There's one underlying factor common to all these women, courage. They were courageous in the face of societal intimidation. They were courageous enough to move against societal norms that were unacceptable to them. They were courageous when it mattered, most thus writing their standards in the sands of time. Purchase the Women of Courage series today at http colon slash slash touchedbythelight.us or mail a check to P.O. Box 7267, Ann Arbor, Michigan 48107. I want you to imagine that you are making a stew. In your mind, you can see the stew. It's boiling on the stove, and everyone in the house can smell it. And they are imagining how the stew is going to taste at dinner time. Now dinner time has come, and everyone is sitting down at the table, ready to eat the stew that you made. You serve everyone a portion of the stew, and everyone smiles with anticipation as they put the spoon in their mouth. As the stew is being tasted, your husband coughs and puts his hand over his mouth. Your son frowns and says, ugh, and your daughter makes no pretense and said flat out, this is awful. One by one, your husband, your son, and daughter excuse themselves from the table and head for the bathroom. You're stymied. What went wrong? You have three different opinions. The stew was awful. You say to yourself, I can't imagine what went wrong. I th thought I put all the ingredients in the pan, so it should have been a great dish. It was your mother's recipe. I really feel bad because I thought I was cooking a great stew. My mother served the stew often throughout my childhood. In fact, the recipe was inherited from my mother's mother. You try the dish a second time, and you get the same reaction from your family. The recipe is just no good. You have to face the fact that you inherited an awful recipe. You need to put it to bed. You do not need to give the recipe to your daughter. I wrote this to help you understand the word self-esteem. Self-esteem is defined as a confidence and satisfaction to oneself. When one is said to have great self-esteem, the person is satisfied with himself or herself. When a person has poor self-esteem, they are not satisfied with themselves, and they are, are often fearful and sad. Self-esteem reflects an individual's overall subjective, emotional evaluation of his self or her own worth. 
It is the decisions made by an individual as an attitude towards self, the consequence of self-esteem. Self-esteem is a great determiner in our life. Our thoughts of self that influence everything we do. What house we purchase, what clothes we wear, what car we purchase, and what spouse we marry. Self-esteem is a great determiner. Self-esteem can play a significant role in your motivation and success throughout life. Low self-esteem may hold you back from succeeding at school or work because you do not believe yourself to be capable of success. Low self-esteem is a negative evaluation of oneself. This type of evaluation usually occurs when some circumstance we encounter in our lives touch our sensitivities. We personalize the incident and experience physical, emotional, and cognitive arousal. Self-esteem is inherited. You inherited a bad recipe for stew. The question is now, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to continue your life with the same old recipe handed down by your mother's mother's mother, or are you going to try something new? Are you going to relearn how to make a new stew? Just like you learned how to jump rope, you learn self-esteem from others around you. Your mother, father, older sister, brother, aunt, uncle, grandmother, the learning occurred over a period of time, a very long period of time. This is the battleground. This is the trial of the mind. This is where the fight takes place for the recovery of yourself. I am a nice person. I like myself. I deserve to be liked and I deserve to marry a nice man or I deserve to marry a nice woman. I deserve to have children. I deserve to have a nice house. I deserve to have a good job. I deserve a great salary. I deserve to get the best out of life. Stop judging yourself so critically. If you need a therapist, go find one. Don't avoid dealing with this. A therapist can help make your life easier to live. Don't look for things to feel ashamed about. Break this cycle. Walking around with low self-esteem is like walking around with a tiny pebble in your shoe. A constant reminder, always finding fault. Nothing is good. You must do it over again. High school left you with little hurts and rejections of people evaluating you. Deal with this. See a professional for help. Self-esteem is shaped by your thoughts, by your relationships, and your experiences. Understand the range of self-esteem and the benefits that you can serve yourself by dealing with this problem. Your children will benefit from your indulgence and your working in this area. Self-esteem is the overall opinion you have of yourself how you feel about your abilities, and how you feel about your limitations. When you have healthy self-esteem, you feel good about yourself and you see yourself deserving respect of others. When you have low self-esteem, you put little value on your opinion or your ideas. You might constantly worry that you aren't good enough. Here is how to tell if your self-esteem needs a boost and why it is important to develop a healthy sense of self own worth. Self-esteem is formed in early childhood. Factors that influence self-esteem include your thoughts and perceptions, how other people react to you, your experiences at home, school, work, and in the community, your illnesses, your disabilities, or your injuries, your age, and your role and status in society. Relationships that are close to you, like parents, siblings, peers, teachers, are important to your self-esteem. Many beliefs you hold about yourself today reflects messages you receive from these people over time. If your relationships were strong, you receive generally positive feedback. You are more likely to see yourself as worthwhile and have healthy self-esteem. If you need received negative feedback and were often criticized or teased or devaluated by others, you are more likely struggling with poor self-esteem. Yet you do not have to be defined by past relationships. Your destiny can be claimed by your thoughts. Your thoughts have the biggest impact on your self-esteem. 
and these thoughts are within your control. If you tend to focus on your weaknesses or flaws, working or changing that can help develop a more balanced and accurate view of yourself. Self-esteem tends to fluctuate over time, depending on your circumstances. It's normal to go through times when you feel down about yourself and times when you feel good about yourself. Generally, however, self-esteem stays in a range that reflects how you feel about yourself over and increases slightly with age. Please pay close attention to this information because thousands and thousands and thousands of people suffer because of low self-esteem. It is keeping them from winning, it's keeping them from being happy, and it's also keeping them from dealing with bullies in their lives. When you have low self-esteem or negative self-esteem, you put little value on your opinion or on your ideas. You focus on your weaknesses, what you perceive as weaknesses, and your thoughts, and you give little credit to your skills and assets. You believe that others are more capable or successful than you. You probably have difficulty in accepting positive feedback. You might fear failure, which can hold you back from exceeding at work or at school. When you have healthy self-esteem, this means you have a balanced view of yourself. For instance, you have a good opinion of your abilities. You recognize your flaws, but you also recognize what you're good at doing. When self-esteem is healthy and grounded in reality, it's hard to have too much of it. Boasting and feeling superior to others around you is not a sign of too much self-esteem. It is more likely that you feel insecure and you have low self. You boast because you do not want people to recognize what you think are flaws in your personality. When you value yourself and have good self-esteem, you feel secure and worthwhile. You have positive relationships with others and you feel confident about your abilities. You are also open to learning and open to feedback, which can help you acquire and master new skills. When you have healthy self-esteem, you are assertive in expressing your needs and opinions. You are confident in your ability to make decisions. You are able to form secure and honest relationships and are less likely to stay in unhealthy relationships. You are realistic in your expectation and you are less likely to be overcritical of yourself or others. You are more resilient and are better able to weather stress and setbacks. Self-esteem affects virtually every facet of your life. Maintaining a healthy, realistic view of yourself is not about blowing your own horn. It's about learning to like and respecting yourself, your flaws, and all. Please pay close attention to the next information. Low self-esteem is a negative evaluation of oneself. This type of evaluation usually comes or occurs when some circumstance we encountered in our life touched on our sensitivities. We personalized the incident and experienced physical, emotional, and cognitive arousal. This is so alarming and confusing that we responded by acting in a self-defeating and self-destructive manner. When that happens, our actions tend to be automatic and impulse-driven. We feel upset, emotionally blocked, our thinking narrows, our self-care deteriorates, we lose our sense of self, we focus on being in control and become self-absorbed. Raising your self-esteem is possible, but it requires that we grow as we face our fears and learn from our experiences. Some of this type of work will require you to see a psychotherapist. Do not reject the idea of a psychotherapist. Some of the things that you can do on your own is one is try to stop self-destructive behavior. One of the things is try to get rid of your addictions. Try to replace them with self-care. 
practice self-care by joining self-help groups and practicing positive health care. I identify triggers that cause the feelings inside of yourself. Start paying attention to yourself. Watch how you respond to your thoughts. Acknowledge when you talk to yourself negatively. Give yourself a choice on how you want to respond. You have a right to identify what you like and what you truly do not like. You have a right to reject what you do not like and what you truly do not need for yourself. You do not have to be detached. You can confront the things in life that you do not like. If you do not like your job, then go back to school and change your situation. Be more assertive. Voice what you see, what you feel, and what you want to make occur. Start using statements beginning with the word I. By expressing your thoughts and feelings and desires in a direct and honest manner, you can show other people that you are changing your life. And finally, last but not least, Remove the words if, can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, maybe, I might from your vocabulary. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Are sex trafficking and literacy important to you? Would you like to help? Well, now you can. We meet twice a month on Saturday. I invite each and every one of you to join me at a local restaurant throughout the city to discuss the importance of sex trafficking and literacy in our community. We need your help now. If you would like a chance to give back to your community, I urge you to send an email to murderedvoices at gmail.com to get dates, times, and locations of each meeting. Again, email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Stand up and help us fight the good fight together. Attention women, have you ever asked yourself why society views you as a lesser being to a man? Or why most leadership positions are filled by men? I urge you to visit touchedbythelight.us and get your copy of this amazing, inspiring new book called Women of Courage Part 2. It's carefully written with a passion for all women. It's the time for all mothers, sisters, and daughters to come together as one. Unite together and understand your life and make a change today. Visit touchedbythelight.us and order the book Women of Courage Part 2 and feel the love and dedication it has to offer. Get your copy today. Attention women, have you ever asked yourself why society views you as a lesser being to a man or why most leadership positions are filled by a man? I urge you to visit touchedbythelight.us and get your copy of this amazing, inspiring new book called Women of Courage Part 1. It's carefully written with a passion for all women. It's the time for all mothers, sisters, and daughters to come together as one. Unite together and understand your life and make a change today. Visit Touched by the light.us and order this new book, Women of Courage Part 1, and feel the love and dedication it has to offer. Get your copy today. At this juncture, I'm going to introduce some information on reading. This is extremely important. Reading will determine the consequences of your life. Reading will help you learn how to deal with the problems of low self-esteem. Reading will help you learn a new profession. Reading will help you learn how to deal with other people. Discussing reading is not easy because feelings get hurt, people are embarrassed, and not being able to read is viewed as a shortcoming. Yet, if we do not change, we'll never grow. We can only become stronger if we grow through change. 
The purpose of church is not for anyone to come to have a good time, but it is a place for you to gain knowledge so your lives will be better. Church is a place for you to gain hope. A book is also a place where you can go to gain hope. Reading can make you stronger so you can win at life. You can win at life if you change by reading. You have a choice to make. You will either be ruled by your emotions or you'll be ruled by your intellect. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of standing in an unemployment line, standing in the welfare line, eating government cheese, then you will listen to me with your brain and not your emotions. Christians are being defeated because of their emotions. People are losing our children to drugs, sex, alcohol, and prison because of our emotions. The battle can be won, but we must have courage. People are not winning because they have not developed self-control, but you can defeat your emotions by reading and learning self-control. You are going to clean yourself up tonight of all your past deeds and leave here a new person. So now we will begin. Reading is defined as the accumulation of knowledge. Reading is one of the processes by which human beings gather information for conducting their lives, which includes working and recreating. When this process is inhibited for whatever reason, the person cannot conduct his or her life successfully. The person meets with bad results. When a person cannot read or does not read well, he or she will live the life of a beggar, a cheat, a liar, or will end up in prison or the grave. They will never receive what God had in store for them. Reading is the most important human activity any man can participate in. When you ignore reading, you will have essentially cut yourself off from other people around you. Our prisons are filled with people who do not know how to read. Our graveyards are filled with people who did not know how to read. You are not successful today because you cannot read or refuse to read. You continue to think you can conduct your life on the information you learned in high school. Your life is in ruin because you cannot read or do not read. Many of your children are in prison today because you did not read to them or teach them the importance of reading. Many of your children are dead because you did not read to them or teach them the importance of reading. Reading teaches you discipline. Reading will tell you about another man's courage. Reading will tell you how to correct some of the mistakes in your life. Reading will help you solve life's problems. Reading will teach you how to find a job. Reading can help you learn a new profession or trade. Reading will help you improve your health. When you do not read, you depend on hitting the number to get you ahead of the game. When you do not read, you go to the casino and wager your life savings trying to win big at the casino. When you do not read, you depend on prostituting yourself to get money. You try to attract men to your breast or bottom, trying to get money to live. When you do not read, you go around the community looking for free food, free clothes, anything free that will help you. When you do not read, you bring men into your home who do not belong there, telling your children to call them daddy. When you do not read or cannot read, you're walking around with no understanding of life. Let me say this again. When you do not read or you cannot read, you are walking around without an understanding of life, and you will meet with poor results. You will not pay your bills correctly. You will not buy the right car. You will not know how to purchase a home. You will not know how to complete your income tax. You will waste your money in bars. You will purchase cheap items to booster your self-esteem. You will live in a poor neighborhood. You will not have a savings account. You will pay more money for goods and services. You will be at the mercy of your fellow man. Your children may or may not go to college. Many of your girls will become pregnant and never graduate from school. You will suffer with many illnesses brought on because of poor diet and poor eating habits and tradition. You will become more and more adamant and shun change, all because you do not have the knowledge you need from reading. Hear me well. You are failing in life because you cannot read or you refuse to read or you refuse to learn to read competently. When you shun knowledge, you remain in darkness. 
You will never reach the light, and you may never see God. Your salvation depends on your knowledge and ability to read. A person goes to a textbook to learn how to build a house, how to repair a car, or how to purchase a computer or buy tires. If the person cannot read or cannot read competently, he or she cannot successfully reach their goal. They will not learn how to purchase a computer or purchase the correct tires. They can ask other people how to do these things, but they are at the mercy of their friends to tell them the truth. We read the Bible to find out what God has to say and to learn how we are supposed to conduct our lives. If we cannot read, or if we cannot read competently, we cannot get the information we need from the Bible to manage our lives properly. A textbook or Bible will not do you any good if you can't read or if you cannot read competently. If you can't read or you can't read competently, the Bible is of no value to you. Listening is not enough. Going to Bible study and coming to church on Sunday listening to a sermon is not enough for you to get the type of information you need to accomplish the task of learning what God wants you to do. If you take notes during Bible study and you take notes during the Sunday sermon, you will be further ahead, but you are still dependent on the person who is interpreting the Bible for you. You are dependent on the integrity of the pastor to give you the right information. To solve this problem so that you will not be misled, you must learn to read, and you must learn to read competently. Relying upon someone else to give you the correct information to conduct your life is extremely dangerous. You will meet with disastrous results if you continue to do this. You can rely upon your girlfriend for information. So she suggests you go to the bar and meet a man. In a few months, you learn you have HIV AIDS, all because you let your girlfriend tell you how to solve one of life's problems, loneliness. This is why you must pray and ask the Lord's guidance when you select a friend. You should also pray when you select a church leader. If you cannot read or you cannot read well, you are placing your life in the hands of the person that is guiding your church. Your eternal salvation depends on the honesty of your pastor. For example, the word with the most drama in the Bible is the word sin. Sin is what the church is all about. Sin is what man is not supposed to do. Well, the problem with this word is it is not clearly defined in our minds. Sin to us is murder, adultery, and fornication. Sin is also something else. Sin is any behavior that blocks the blessings of God. This is the most important definition of sin. It is any behavior that blocks the blessings of God. Why? Because we all want to be blessed by God. We all want God to like us. We want God to be satisfied with our performance on earth. We want God's blessing so we can live a healthy, wealthy, and prosperous life on earth. No one wants to be poor, sick, and unhappy while living on earth. As Christians, we know our circumstances can change if we receive the blessings of God. Therefore, we strive to get God to like us. If you do not realize after reading your Bible that there are specific sins that block the blessing of God, you have not read your Bible competently. Now, if you accept the doctrine of Jesus Christ and the edicts of God, then we know our lives can be filled with blessings. How many of you have read the Bible through at least once? How much of it did you remember? You recalled most of what you read if you took notes and only if you reviewed those notes regularly. Your mind must be in the habit of taking in information. Your mind must be flexible. You must be in the habit of taking in information, processing and evaluating this information. Now, when you read the books of Chronicles, what was the greatest lesson that you learned? Did you realize God wrestled the kingdom from the various kings because these kings refused to abide by his laws? The kings sin. They refused to be obedient. God gave the kings over to their enemies when the kings did not do as God told them. Were you impressed by this? Did you see yourself in these situations? Or did you quickly read this section telling yourself you understand what the books of Chronicles had to say? 
Do you see that if you did not do as God told you to do, that God would wrestle your life away from you? Or did you think you could escape God's wrath by asking His forgiveness and continuing doing as you please? Did you learn that disobedience is a sin? Did you realize that gossiping was a sin, that lying and cheating is a sin? Did you learn that God withdrew His protection from His people when men began having sex with women outside of marriage? Did you realize that when man did not repent of his sins, the result of that sin was visited upon the person's children for generations to come? When you read the Bible, did you make any associations of what was said in the Bible to the way you are conducting your life? God said for you to teach your children of him. Did you do this? Or is your son in prison because you are too busy working overtime to pay proper attention to what he was doing with his free time? How much overtime did you work to purchase your motorcycle or to pay for your girlfriend's new car working against the security of your children? How often did you stick your son in front of the television instead of giving him a book to read? How many times did you use the television as your babysitter so you could get your groove on? How often did you read to your son? How many books have your son seen you read? How many books are in your home? Did you repeatedly tell your son through example and through words that learning to read was his way out of poverty, that using a gun was not his way out of poverty? 1. Purchase a book or books for a prisoner at touchedbythelight.us 2. Those of you with children in prison, ask friends, family, and co-workers to purchase a book for a prisoner and email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com with prison name and number. 3. Become part of our One Million American campaign. We want you to agree to teach just one person to read. This act will strengthen our community and the country. People who can read can learn to manage their lives without violence. See our video, Touched by the Light Literacy Program, on Facebook or YouTube. Conduct a fundraiser at your church and use the money to start a reading center in the church where every child in the neighborhood is invited to church twice a week to learn to read. After school and on Saturday, leaving enough time where children will be safe walking home. Concentrate on ensuring every child in your neighborhood can read above the fourth grade level. Reading at the fourth grade level is the watershed for entering prison. Recovering your life from foreclosure, bankruptcy, divorce, or other personal tragedies is not easy. But you must believe you may be wounded, broken, battered, and hurt by life, but you must stand up and fight. People often say, when you're going through hell, never give up. It's easy for someone to say this, but talk is cheap. But you are in a place where every turn you take are met with a challenge or trouble, one thing after another. I'm not here to simply tell you not to give up. I understand what it means to be going through what you're going through right now. I slept on a cement floor being bitten by spiders to survive. However, I'm here to tell you that change is possible. There is light at the end of the tunnel, but you must hang on and do as I tell you. Yes, change is possible. I want you to hope and to believe against even all evidence. Spare is no respecter of status. It is no respecter of age, background, gender, or color. Somewhere right now there is a child crying, a man high on drugs, a mother dancing in a club just to pay her bills. Somewhere right now out there is a person heartbroken, a loss of a dear one, a failed promise of love. Somewhere out there is a person clothed in rags without a home, without affection, and without a family, and without love. Somewhere right now someone out there is broken, going through a rough time. I say unto you, hold on, stand fast, you can restore and recover your life. You must believe that you are worth fighting for, regardless of what the world says. When I lost everything and had to live in my car, I had a person to forecast gloom and doom into my life. 
She said the only person in the world that I loved would desert me. This did not happen. When a doctor punched a hole in my heart and sewn me back up, and I bled inside my chest cavity for seven days, I did not die. God sent me an angel to help me. When cancer visited me, I did not die. God sent me an angel to stand by me. I still have both these friends today. They have seen the best of me and the worst of me. I say unto you, believe and stand fast. Help is on the way. Are sex trafficking and literacy important to you? Would you like to help? Well, now you can. We meet twice a month on Saturday. I invite each and every one of you to join me at a local restaurant throughout the city to discuss the importance of sex trafficking and literacy in our community. We need your help now. If you would like a chance to give back to your community, I urge you to send an email to murderedvoices at gmail.com to get dates, times, and locations of each meeting. Again, email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Stand up and help us fight the good fight together. Attention women, have you ever asked yourself why society views you as a lesser being to a man? God bless. Twice a month on Saturday, I meet with my listeners for a discussion about issues affecting women. Join us. For dates, times, and directions, you can reach us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Stop thinking there's nothing you can do to change the world. Your life is important. For more information on our books or subjects discussed, email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to Women of Courage and have a great day.